when you have doubt, it's like the surf of the sea. It drives and tosses you, tosses you here and there. So many people feel like they're being tossed back and forth, back. Maybe you're creating that scenario for yourself. everybody and welcome to podcast number 114 of the Gordon and Sharice show where we're carrying our next podcast episode from last week into this week Um, and we just had so much that we didn't cover this last week and we have to keep going through it because it's a great discussion about examples of power that we often overlook Mm. and um, I think I love talking about this stuff because it's it's the hidden stuff. It's 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 the stuff that we can't always see, but there is power and the power of God working in our lives in circumstances no matter how despairing somebody is, no matter how down they feel, no matter how um just overlooked. Sometimes a person that's in pain feels overlooked. But please do not disregard the fact that the power is happening and you can engage and tap into it from God. Right. How many people feel isolated today because right in front of their nose, maybe someone they're supposed to be engaged to or married to, maybe that's their soulmate, but they look and they have these expectations and social media helps create these expectations these Instagram posts with men and women, and here's what looks attractive and sexy and everything else. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is it it stretches our thoughts into places of fantasy and an unrealistic world. And sometimes the most beautiful people are right in front of our nose. And that's what we're missing a lot of times with power. Mm. We overlook the things that provide nourishment Mm for our souls and they're very there you see the manifestation of power of god within you and your ability to carry out different tasks that's true that's why it's so important to do this now on the last session we started to talk about grow through your pain Mm -hmm. we were talk about the contrast though of what that means because i i think it was so important that you explained growing through your pain Well, it wasn't necessarily growing through the pain. It's growing through the journey of pain. Right. Growing through that journey. Yes. And I want to talk about the process first today a little bit, because what do you do through your growth? Yes, you have the portions that are hidden. You have the portions that God's working on your behalf and you don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have seen this several times. Mm -hmm. I've gone through times of reading scripture six hours a day plus. And the more I, the more I study and the more I'm disciplined, the more I'm going to grow, the quicker I'm going to be the person that God wants me to be and the the right person that's going to attain everything in life. And I'm going to keep pouring into just studying and studying and studying And then I've had other times in my life where I may have just read some verses or skipped over to something, and yet I can look back and go, whoa, I was actually still growing in that process because God was doing more of the work than I actually imagined. That's so true. And yeah. and I'm not I'm not telling people not to read scripture in a steadfast way, okay? What I'm saying is There's a lot of times God's behind the scenes doing the things that we can't even think about. I think what you're saying is that God works beyond our self-effort. Sure does. And he has a way of strengthening, conditioning, and doing things behind the scenes of our lives that we, we wouldn't even think to do or know to do. The growth is exponential and it's happening in the lives of everybody whether you're in pain or not it's there right right and so when we're talking about the process what can we do well obviously we just talked about we can draw upon those resources of strength Mm -hmm. and namely two things the word of god but the other thing is believing in the ministry of, of our high priest jesus christ 
And it, that's that hidden part. That's the part that's beyond our self-effort. That's the part of the invisible world, the things that affect every part about who we are in the inside of who we are. Mm. Okay? So as we grow through pain, mm-hmm. it's about gaining empirical knowledge. Mm. What have we learned by experience about suffering? And, and you mentioned before you go on to the next point about the journey of pain. We're growing through the journey of pain. And you're mentioning about Christ. He is the one who is on the journey with us. And he went before us. And yes, he's he did. behind us. He's, he's in every part of that. So the, the amazing thing about that journey is that that journey isn't you alone. It's with Christ. He is gentle. He is lonely. As Dane Ortland, I'm going to give you credit properly this time on this podcast, reflects in the book Gentle and Lowly. That's who Christ is, and he is on that journey of pain with you to help you be transformed in the way that you think right. through this. He's not celebrating the wedding feast in heaven yet. Mm. He's still praying. He's an intercessory prayer guide for us and the holy spirit is taking instruction within and shares everything from the father and you have this dynamic relationship that's even hard to imagine it's god's formation in our lives Mm -hmm. and he loves Mm -hmm. us and he's using us so when you start gaining empirical knowledge not just about the topic of acute or chronic pain But that empirical knowledge about suffering, understanding your pain condition, understanding your emotional anxiety condition, um, imagining the different diagnosis that might be applied to you, and then the ways you can walk out your life. When you deal with suffering, you also deal with the spiritual life. Don't think you're just compartmentalized to the physical. That's right. It spreads to the mental, the emotional, mm-hmm. our wills. Totally. How we apply mm-hmm. our lives to how we're going to pragmatically walk through this journey mm-hmm. of pain, how we're going to grow through this process. It's all that type of decision that occurs after we do one thing. We make a choice or make a decision of, of how we're going to respond mm to those sharp challenges in our life. Mm-hmm. That's true. And people can make that decision. They don't just have to sit on the sidelines and become victims. Power is manifest mm-hmm. the second you say, I'm not going to be a victim. That's a decision. That's a decision and that's power. Yeah. So if I'm lying in bed and I don't feel like I can do anything more, And then I'm encouraged to just get out of bed and start one thing. And I'm I'm, I'm sharing this with the audience member right now, the person in the listening la-la land, okay, as as Bill was talking about on, on the podcast. When you can even take that first step that's in a demonstration or example of growth through the journey of pain. Mm Mm-hmm. It's not staying stuck in the old mundane things Mm. or the old ways of thinking or the clutches of a disease process, Mm -hmm. okay? Also, when you're going through this growth stage, you have to be willing to change your perspectives. Mm -hmm. It's easy, again, to stay stuck in a perspective where you feel like you're limited with everything you can do. Mm-hmm. It took me years to change my perspectives. And change wasn't this. It, was, it wasn't just, oh, it, an automatic thing. And, okay, Gordon, for instance, uh, you like to wear um, shorts and now you're wearing jeans. So you changed your perspective. No. It's about this. It's about making a decision, walking out the steps, and they're hard steps, folks. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, that's to grow through the journey of pain. It's about incorporating faith. It's about saying, what am I going to do mentally with different choices? Um, do I surrender my will to God? How do I grow when I'm at the end of myself? How do I grow in the new things of life when it feels like everything is old and damaged? It's all that combination mm -hmm. of the process where change or transformation occurs. Mm -hmm. That's power. That's the process of power. That's good, Gordon. Okay. Nobody could do that for you. No one could do it for me. And nobody could force you into that mindset. I think that the that the miracle power under that power was God's power infusing you to right. actually have the your will change, to bend your mind, to open up to the possibility of changing your mind. You're right. I I would say this for me because I'm asked this question by a lot of people what was the one thing where you made that changing decision that life changing decision I'm going to just tell everybody this it was not based on my physical circumstances whatsoever mm -hmm. now I wanted things changed physically. I wanted to lose 75 pounds. I wanted to walk better. I wanted strength restored. I wanted to be able to have another purpose. I wanted to have more money. I, I had all these desires, just like everyone else. But that was not, hmm. that was not the cliff where I was standing at to make a different decision. Hmm. Okay, And when you're at the cliff, you're making a life decision because it's easy to say, I want to jump and just, I'm tired. I'm done. The thing that mm -hmm. changed me was the invisible portion of who I am, the things that I couldn't see. And it dealt with one word, believe. Mm -hmm. That's what changed me. I made a choice to believe. Hmm. I knew yep. all the intellectual scientific issues mm -hmm. that surround my diagnosis and how it would impact the family and everyone around me. You know that I was well educated on that process. But what what the change that occurred happened from belief. Mm -hmm. Believing. I see that. So mm -hmm. Let's talk about the belief process a little bit. Mm. How did this power manifest? And it's not even in your notes. I love it. No, it's not, Sharice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when you're growing through your pain journey, it involves two things. And it came out of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7 for me that impacted me greatly. Mm. Number one, do you trust in the existence of an invisible God? And then number two, everyone can say real easily, I believe in God. Mm -hmm. I'm Protestant, I believe in God. I'm Catholic, I believe in God. I'm Jewish, I believe in God. I'm Hindu, Whatever. I believe in God. Yeah. And here's another, here's yep. Buddha and Allah and Islam. And, you know, go, go through it. I believe in God. Mm -hmm. But do you trust? Have you surrendered your life? That was part of the invisible process of change. And then number two, does God reward those who diligently seek him? Hmm. That was a tough one. And that was that disciplined process of seeking God and allow diligently seeking him and then allowing him to make changes in my life even when they were uncomfortable for me what was difficult about that though because i was trying to hold on in a survival mode to my own pain in my own existence mm -hmm. so letting go of your survival mode right to trust god right to do this you're going to take care of me financially how i don't know Mm -hmm. You're going to, mm -hmm. I'm going to be able to walk a 5K. Okay. Someday I'm going to be able to lift luggage again. When I've had a five pound lifting restriction that was put on me for the rest of my life. The physical yeah. things that occurred yeah. happened because I was growing deeply in God. And God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit was forming in me. So that's an important differential 
that we need to break down for just a minute. Okay. Because the power doesn't come from the outside in. You couldn't, you could have said, yes, I believe in God, but still forced your way through to this power that you're looking for, this change. And there were times I still and tried to do that, by I, the way. I know it's, it, it happens, but you would find yourself flat on your back when you would. Yes, I would. But this inner change, the, this invisible change, the stuff that happened in your deepest parts of you, it started with your spirit, not your body. Change began in your spirit, and then it manifested into your soul, and then into your flesh. Yes. It's almost like the flesh, your flesh was the last to obey the change, but it had to finally come along because everything else about you had already been changing. Right. Through God's power. Right. So you believed in what you couldn't even experience yet what you didn't see the thing about this that's so important for people to understand you weren't seeking the physical change first you weren't even putting no. demands on god for i have to have this happen to me i have to have i have to be able to walk that 5k you never said that ever to god like i mean at least that i'm aware of i i feel that the bigger thing is you are say, saying saying my body is a sacrifice to you, God. I surrender it because you made me. You gave this to me. You gave me my body. I don't know how to make it a temple when it's broken, but you do. Right. I don't know how to do this, but I trust you. Right. So when we go into the depths of belief, mm -hmm. the first thing that happened was because of my belief in Christ, because of that, then I could participate in the renewal of my mind. Mm -hmm. Totally. I did not try to renew my mind first on everything that was not of God mm -hmm. because I wanted to be involved with the power of healing. I wanted wholeness in me mm -hmm. i want i said if the window if if the window's slightly open or the door is cracked open for me to walk through it and i'm knocking and i'm seeking and i'm asking i wanted to walk through the fullness of who god is truly truly i wanted to go through that journey with him and grow in love in change mm. in perspective in every part of who what life is mm -hmm. and who I was as an individual, the renewal of the mind occurred. So I want you to think of this. Here's what's great. Through belief, this is also when we learn to capture vision. Mm. We can start, when you start seeing some things, even the floating pieces around you, well, I, I can see how this works for my life. I can see how that works, but I'm not there yet. And I wonder if this piece could ever be put together. When the pieces start coming together, it was belief that was the cement that put things together for mm, me. Good. And it built that bridge to a better future and a continual renewal of the mind. That's when you start discovering the intricacies of who God is. And then you have that self-anthropology about who That's you good. are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it allows you to do that. And so we had the first point on the last podcast. Okay. Where we're not focusing on ourselves. Living for others. Right. Living for others. You can start seeing outwardly differently mm -hmm. when inwardly you're changing. Mm-hmm. And for me, that was part of the process of growing through your pain. That's good, Gordon. Okay, so let's go to let's go to the second point, and I, I think this is about all we'll get through. <laughs> That's okay? fine. You can tell my heart was heavy over the last few weeks yeah. with, with the grandkids yeah. gone. It was almost like a death process for me. I, I know. It's like I'm starting to cry more. In my older years. Well, at, at commercials, Gordon. I, I, I know. You're, I you're, mean, you're, I'm like, are you going through menopause? <laughs> like, what is happening? I have, I have, I, and I have I been also, shedding tears out of nowhere. I literally feel insensitive because it's not <laughs> affecting me. 
<laughs> and I'm thinking, what is happening? Well, I watched the golf tournament, the President's Cup, and I've got tears streaming down my <laughs> eyes. You're looking at me like I'm absolutely insane. I mean... <laughs> I don't know what that has to do with power, but, but keep you, going. Well, you know what? Maybe the power to cry. Maybe actually everybody, if you have a good cry, you're going to find a lot more power in your life. I, I, I can't because, believe. Because honestly, Gordon, it took you years to build up to have the strength to cry, I think. And now that you've allowed those well, floodgates to open, you're a little weepy. A little hormonal imbalance there, I think. No, but I've I've also done this with my lives. It was seeing those grandkids and seeing seeing our children and seeing our son getting married and then just just opening up more. It's one of yeah. those it's kind of those floating pieces that have been mm -hmm. out there that have starting to come together and it's walking in belief. And so when I see people strive for things or make accomplishments yeah I'm, I'm proud of other people you cheer people on i absolutely i do. I, I rarely find you being jealous of other people's success i i think that's one beautiful thing because when you're in pain jealousy can rob you of loving other people and celebrating in their this is a total side note no oh, i think it's a great one it, it i think that it can make people uh just rot in their own pain being jealous and looking at everybody else's success instead of cheering them on. And I think that uh, being a good coach and a mentor and loving beyond your limitations, you know, Gordon, I find that, that there's power in that, loving beyond your limitations because God is an unlimited God. Right. And his power exists in us right. and those who... Uh, love his son and believe and want to connect with God, realize that true power is the power to not destroy people, but to lift them up and love them. Right. Mm -hmm. Very good. So now I get to add another point to the oh, no. growth process about... Did you even make it to the second point? Here? We're not even making it to the second okay. point. But but it you did bring up something that I think people need to be keenly aware of. And it's the fact that when you're growing in love, okay, you're growing, maybe you have the capacity to love someone at 70%. I'm not there today. Okay. Well, maybe you're at 50%. And if you're in pain, 3%. maybe you can hardly love anybody else at all and you're at 10%. <laughs> but as we grow in God, we can love people with God's love. Oh, wait a minute. I'm oh, wearing love. Your shirt, love. I forgot. Okay, there's but, power in that. But that's part of the growth process. And I think we have a lot of God's love in our lives and with our friends and people and associates and colleagues. And it's wonderful to see how God has made himself manifest in that. That's been very, excuse me, very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to point number two. I don't know if we're going to make it. but I made this up. Try. I made this one up. Uh, are you saying this is fictitious? No, it's real. Okay. The tug of war effect mm -hmm. can easily take you off the complete and authentic path of living. Without even realizing it, pain becomes a catalyst to move us into the story of becoming a prodigal son or daughter. Mm -hmm. How many times do we find ourselves in pain where we're being pulled from taking the straight path towards God to drifting into the clutches of pain? Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, that type of wandering, that type of drifting, that type of moving away from the source of love and healing and the source of transformation can negatively impact our thoughts, our emotions, our mm. wills, and even our bodies. And folks, if you're really listening to this, this is a form of disbelief. Don't be pulled so many times where you say, I've got it. I've got it handled. God loves me by grace. It's okay. It's okay if I slipped in this one thing. And you're pulled back and forth and back and forth and back and mm -hmm. forth. You're going to find that you're not part of the wash, rinse cycle that you get in a washing machine where you're cleaner. You're going to find that you're actually more chaotic. Mm -hmm. You're more spread out. Okay, you're more confused, more anxiety, more fear. 
that's what will accumulate in all of your thoughts and then it creates a different emotional reaction it creates doubt total doubt doubt about god's goodness it creates doubt about your identity it creates doubt about faith and and you mentioned it but also in james it talks about it that you know doubt when you have doubt it's like the surf of the sea it derives and tosses you tosses you here and there it tosses you all about so who wants to be so many people feel like they're being tossed back and forth back maybe you're creating that scenario for yourself because you're not believing you're in doubt and you've gone off the path right and that's negative power right that's not what we want in our lives it isn't and you shared something from henry now and that puts us back on the track right okay and it's okay he wrote this i've got to read this i have been meditating on the story of the prodigal son Mm -hmm. it is a story about returning I realize the importance of returning over and over again. My life drifts away from God. I have to return. My heart moves away from my first love. I have to return. My mind wanders to strange images. I have to return. Returning is a lifelong struggle. I am moved by the fact that the father didn't require any higher motivation. His love was so total and unconditional that he simply welcomed his son Hmm. home. That's right. And I've looked at that story throughout my life and said that story in Luke with the prodigal son, I get it. It happened to me once. I'm done. I'm done. I've learned that lesson. Hmm. I must be more spiritually mature. I'm going to tell you, you're not Gordon Selly. Well, thank you, Sharice. <laughs> none fact, of us are. None of us are. And, and by returning, there is power and growth through the journey of pain when you return to God. Yeah. That is the source. And it's really a daily thing. It is a daily thing. And, and, and there's times where you, you're doing that. You're, you're making that return to God. And then when I go back to the fact of what we just spoke about, um, that instills that process of belief. True. Over and over and over And you know what I marvel again. about returning to God? The Father never left. He never left. He always was there. Mm. He was waiting in expectation and waiting without judging him saying you dirty filthy sloppy son of mine you know he didn't do that he was waiting to say i'll give you the best robe i'll give you my ring i'll give you everything that i have oh yeah you know and literally that's the only power that will sustain us when we are in pain is that level of love that demonstration of love that yes pain pain is the it's such a temptation for it to take our minds completely off of god and totally onto ourself Mm. and totally onto what we deserve or what the world hasn't given us and i want it now and i want my life to be an instagram story i want it to be insta famous i want this i want that you know what the truth is the true humility of god is the fact that he loves us so much and he didn't smash his own son he let him return we have to return daily i have to return daily i have to return daily as a caregiver you know there's parts of me that have a caregiving heart but i can't return i can't get full again until i return to the father every day i'm depleted if I try to do that in my own strength and take things that I shouldn't be taking from people, you know, I, I give um, out of the abundance of God's love. But I'll tell you, returning that that in itself is power. Yes. Let's give a valuable takeaway, Sharice. I think I just did. I think you just <laughs> did as well. <laughs> returning to God daily. So because we're, we're running out of time, I'm going to give my valuable takeaway. And, I, and I'd like to do it from the voice of someone who's in pain. Yes. 
Please. Who doesn't feel like they left? Who feels like they've been tortured? Hmm. And I've had seasons like that. And they felt like they already moved beyond that rebellious prodigal that is returning for the father's love. I've experienced the father's love several times in my life, but still dealing with pain. Mm. How do you return? How do you actually return? You return with full belief. Mm. Okay. It's not partial belief. It's not disbelief. It's not mixing. It's not mixing self-improvement or self-actualization techniques into your life. It's diving into God with full belief and finding comfort under his refuge and in his presence. So good. And when we do that, this is where our minds and our emotions and wills and bodies start responding to a healing source. They start aligning up. They start lining up. And this is because we're returning. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're all ongoing prodigals because we're still dealing with sin though sin was atoned for through the cross totally. and resurrection okay so i have one more thing to add to oh the i take bet away. yes please i because it it's well it's so good this is so good just to remind myself of today and i hope it it's a good reminder for everybody listening that power is found after you stop judging yourself mm. by your pain yes and you start allowing the mercies of God to flow into you and through your pain. Yes. So that you can be transformed by God's power yes. and not your own. Mm. Totally agree. Totally agree. Totally agree. By returning as a prodigal, you start losing the heart to judge others. So you good. start gaining the heart for God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sharice, again, will conclude the show. Everyone, you know, the simplest way to just get get a hold of us is the brand new app gnc go to the i say go to the apple store easiest way to download it right now yeah you get everything about us go through all the different ways you can visit our website and listen to podcasts and even the cowboy up series that that gets mm -hmm. you on our email list and then you can contact us through better living community mm -hmm. and for me Grab these online courses. Yes. We have a few in the queue right now, mm -hmm. but we can at least start it with the app on the first course. I think Flipping the script on your pain story. Huge. And by golly, if you start working on your life now, imagine you're not going to be making these brand new New Year's resolutions in January. You're already going to start walking that journey and Absolutely. making changes. And keep walking, people. And we thank you for being on the journey with us. Yes, we do. Thank you. And Sharice, we'll see you next week for podcast 115. And we're going to finish part three of this. Oh, boy. A one-parter turned into a three-parter. We will catch you next time.